floor to my uh, colleague, Janka Kereji, who is the moderator of this panel, and uh, she, will, uh, she will tell us what to do. Yes, well, first of all, uh, welcome everyone. We will wait a few minutes uh, for everyone to join because we had the master lecture before from 9 a.m. So uh, it just finished. <laughs> so we will uh, wait a few minutes uh, for everyone to join this, uh, this session, this panel. And then uh, we will uh, start the session. Hello, welcome. I see that we have Eugenie Stodor, who is the first, our first speaker it will be. Yes, I'm here. Great. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And then we have Elena and me. So we have three presentations uh, for today, prepared for today. Is that uh, it's only a question? It's possible to present in Romanian or it's uh, English? <laughs> well, it's English because uh, okay. the no problem. But we we yes. saw we saw we are only Romanian uh, three or four. <laughs> well, now until now, but I think that uh, there will be other uh, other participants joining, and also the presentations will be on YouTube. Okay, no problem. Uh, I don't have a, a problem with uh, English. <laughs> it's only yes, great. A subject in Romanian, <laughs> typical Romanian subject. And yes, I, mean, I have the same see. problem. I had to translate some things that are not yes. so easy <laughs> to translate. You, 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 you can use both Romanian and English, maybe in the special and delicate. Uh, um, um, your expression or what you want to to make uh, meaning in particular um, expression if you want thank you thank you very much uh, i don't want to create uh, problems or <laughs> no it's it's perfect okay so uh, we will wait just one minute more and then we will start uh, this session Have you participated at other uh, sessions yesterday or on Wednesday? Yes, it's a question for me or? For everyone, for everyone. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Did you enjoy the presentations? Maybe the master lectures? Yes. Yes, I, I participated yesterday uh, mainly because today I was moderating the first <laughs> master lecture. And uh, I was really impressed, especially by the presentation on logonomic systems. Wow, it was, yes, uh, on social, from a social semantic perspective, very, very enriching. Okay, so- Talking about uh, Mihail Lilin, I think, Bianca, no? Yes, exactly, yes. Uh, Mihail Lilin is the president of uh, Russian Institute of Economy and Science in uh, Moscow. Moscow. Wow. Yes, it's very, very important people there. Wow, great, great to, to hear that. Okay, so I believe we can start uh, today's session. Uh, just a second. Uh, so uh, I will just briefly present myself. I am Bianca Keji. I am a PhD lecturer at the College of Communication and Public Relations here at the National University of Political Studies and Public Administration in Bucharest, Romania. I will be your moderator today, but also one of the presenters. So at a certain point, I will give myself the floor. <laughs> uh, just a few administrative issues. We have one hour and a half uh, for the debate, which means approximately 50 to 20 minutes for each presentation and uh, followed by five to 10 minutes of Q&A. So we will have a Q&A session after each presentation, uh, which means uh, that uh, uh, you can ask uh, any questions to each uh, presenter. Uh, okay, so um, I will now uh, give the floor to our first, first speaker from this panel, Eugenie Stodor, uh, with a presentation entitled When Social Codes Change, Vips Threaten to Sue the Humor. Let me just give a brief introduction to Eugenie Stodor. Eugenie Stodor is lecturer, doctor in communication sciences at the Faculty of Letters, Philology, Bucharest. He, ha he has a PhD in sociology, uh, obtained in 2015, advised by Professor Dr. Vintila Mihailescu with a dissertation on the sociology of Romanian humor. And uh, 
uh, in 19, from 1998, uh, he's a collaborator for the weekly cultural magazine Dilemma, Dilemma Veke, and the project manager on hotnews.ro. Uh, he's also senior editor of the weekly newspaper Katsavenku, Academia Katsavenku, Katsavenci. Uh, his fields of interest revolve around humor, intercultural studies, journalism, new media, creative writing, and history of communication. Eugeni Stodor, you have the floor. Mm -hmm. You can project the presentation if you if you want. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. This is my life, <laughs> and now uh, it's okay. Yes, yes, we can see everything's fine. Yes, thank you. Uh, the present uh, research uh, starts from an interview with. Uh, the Times New Romans uh, editor-in-chief uh, Kalin Petrar from February 2020. It tries to point at several cases where humor is uh, judged as uh, being conflicting uh, and uh, sometimes ends in court. Starting from this interview about Times New Roman uh, humoristic side, uh, I uh, point out some reasons why humor becomes a subject of a major uh, disagreement, especially under the social uh, circumstances imposed by social uh, networks. The post uh, about the bankruptcy, uh, bankrupts, the Chufulich Barbershop Network bankruptcy, uh, this is, uh, triggered uh, Jena, uh, Jeta Voina's uh, PR officer's uh, violent reaction. Voina's PR officer asked for a uh, retraction. During uh, that, Times New Roman is a humoristic side, claims uh, Petrar. How can you say that a joke is not real? How to refute a joke? The PR officer didn't understand how Times New Roman fun functions and uh, gives up any dialogue. Other threats come from Trey Stariu, Mihaila Radulescu, just a moment. Uh, Mihaila Radulescu and Maruza, Catalin Maruza. The first uh, declared uh, in the media page uh, that he asked for uh, 2 billion lei. The second posted on her account uh, denial and the third sent a notification through a lawyer. Uh, this is the articles. Um, all these remain only threats. The Times New Roman jokes refer to some embarrassing situations of these VIPs. Tristariu promotes his new hair implant and uh, has a comment against the Eurovision winner Conchita Wurst, the woman with uh, beard. Radulescu, Mihala Radulescu, um, comments ironically on a competitor look in her uh, TV show. Just a moment, yes. Um, Maruza invite, invited Chandra, the smallest man in the world, in his show. Petrar, in his interview, enumerates uh, these are uh, all the comments. Yes. Um, Petrar, in his interview, enumerates uh, some major roots of the humor misunderstandings, the typical emotional reaction in social media context the source checking, uh, certain public duplicity, it's funny to laugh at another one, but when humor uh, touches you or another close to you, then you become radical intolerant. Last but not least, the confusion between fake news from flow and humor persists. The VIPs used to be aggression uh, of the tabloids news are not capable to understand the satirical text. Noel Carroll 
showed the fact that humor fundamentally means fiction. We shouldn't regard information as satirical phrasing. Phrasing, For those who don't understand jokes, catharsis is replaced with a major discomfort, anxiety, and implicitly the reaction is uh, one of defense and sometimes leading to court. The group of uh, Times New Roman editors are dealing with a community of practice where irony and auto irony functioned orally amongst the friends before tw uh, 2000. After, um, uh, after uh, 2000, uh, Times New Roman community was spread online. The new ones in the humor community take the, in the Times New Roman, <laughs> online community uh, take uh, the language and the content as distressing distressing only two threads and the ended uh, up in court the spiru Haret series and uh, dragna's whore the first was linked uh, to the ministry of education investigations regarding the illicit uh, diplomas and the second to the humble attitude of the participants in the PSD Congress, political Congress. In Dragna's Hor case, the main, uh, just a moment, yes. Um, the main dilemma is if you are dealing with humor or offensive content. According to Petrar, uh, the text itself is uh, elaborated after uh, research of the online and environment, which speaks about PSD Yesman atmosphere. Um, in rough terms, which speaks about the PSD Yesman atmosphere in uh, rough ter terms. The whole internet was uh, speaking like this. Times New Roman did nothing else but to label it. Dragna designed the Congress not as a political debate, but a long praise to his own personality. Those who do not belong to the community of Times New Roman tribe, as the PSD members, take humor as an offense. Humor is one of the many points of view on the reality. The humor groups, use the same words as the society in general. The humor groups don't do anything else than classifying in a more rapid rhythm. The social media pressure, the social media um, pressure technically corrupt humor. Lenier, uh, Jaron Lenier, um, underlines the fact that uh, no matter how much the humorist calibrates the content, the social media behavior corrupt every temperamental mark. The more you try to underline the masks of humor, the more um, these are corrupt by the random behavior of social media. Times New Roman lost its free will, entered in a game of classifications that could only lead to direct tough words and phrases. This rapid fast game of humorous classification joined by a multiple and overwhelming reaction abolish the capacity of understanding the subject. Humor is a form of personal interpretation and uh, knowledge of uh, and the knowledge of individual limits of the community limits of remembering the society rules frequently cancel in uh, social media the social media behavior with uh, multiple users and tribes corrupt the humor qualities and transform humor in a yes hate speech from flow fake news this is all.
Yes. We are not uh, seeing the presentation anymore. Uh, yes, I uh, close. Uh, I close. It's a problem. I share. Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's perfect. But we still. My, uh, my presentation is over. <laughs> we still have maybe two yeah. or five minutes time for a final remarks. If you would like to address uh, some uh, final thoughts or remarks. Yes. I uh, uh, you you see the yes yes now we see the the share yes these are uh, times new roman jokes the examples yes yes examples So when did you collect these uh, jokes? It was a certain uh, a period of time, or it was yes, uh, uh, the the interview with Petrar was in uh, 2020 February, mm -hmm. and uh, the jokes are only the jokes uh, uh, that that jokes goes to the trial. Uh, this one, uh, this uh, one, only these are uh, go to the judge in the court. Mm -hmm. Serious, and uh, there are from uh, I don't know uh, twenty for the beginners, uh, for the start, uh, from from the moment of start of uh, Times New Roman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. This is. Twenty zero seven, and <laughs> I don't know. There are old, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are these are uh, recently. I don't know. This these are uh, recently. You know, uh, Congress in uh, twenty eighteen. Yes, well, we are seeing, like, in a way, a brief history of uh, Times New Roman humor, how yes. it evolved around the political figures, if I might say. Yes. And not only, it's, it also applies to lifestyle, uh, lifestyle humor, if yes. I might uh, refer to it like this. Okay. But uh, these are uh, with uh, juridic problem. Uh, this is the content of my uh, presentation. Yes, well, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to give the floor uh, to the audience. If you have some questions uh, or remarks for uh, our presenter around uh, the social codes, uh, the types of humor maybe, and also uh, around the ways in which uh, social media affects humor as we have uh, seen only uh, the 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 my point of view about humor is um, it's obvious in my presentation it's uh, you you must uh, be in the this community of practice if you don't understand the the jokes the jokes uh, we have a problem Mm -hmm. The code social sociology, uh, not uh, literary literature or artistic uh, point of view. Yes, the codes are very important here in order yes, to decode yes. the meanings. Yes, uh, yes. yes. Associate and you know also the, the codes you are in. You don't know the codes, and uh, this is important. Uh, practice, practice with the community. And also the cultural More codes uh, yes. are very important. This is also yes. the topic of, uh, of the it's edition. There's not a difference between uh, our jokes uh, on a coffee. Yes, uh, we take a coffee uh, and uh, we jokes, jokes, jokes. Uh, and uh, in online is the same, uh, it's the same problem. If mm -hmm. you are not uh, in, 
you know, are exactly. out. Especially related to internet memes. <laughs> we will talk about this uh, very challenging topic immediately. Yes. Well, if there are any questions or remarks for our speaker, Elena, please. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you for this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, I really enjoy it. And I'm uh, very happy that you, uh, um, you, uh, bring into uh, you you talked about this uh, um, uh, satirical website uh, times new roman uh, my question is i mean it's like more like a, i don't know i don't even know if it's a question or a comment but you said that they the ones that uh, sue the uh, uh, the the website they didn't get the joke right because they weren't in the community of they didn't uh, get the codes. They, they weren't part of the community. Is I, I hope I, I, I got it right. But I would challenge this. I think they did get the joke. I, I don't think that they didn't get the joke, but they weren't. I think they rejected. It's a form of rejection. They uh, uh, basically, uh, in, in humor and in irony, irony there's this, uh, uh, there's this uh, gap between what is meant and what is said, and I think their uh, reaction is uh, to um, to the literal part of the joke, to what is uh, said. They rejected uh, what is said. They rejected the joke, or they rejected the humor. I wonder what are your uh, thoughts about about this. I think they are members of the. I don't see the being part of the community. Um, playing such a, an important role in this particular situation, especially the, the fact that they uh, even got uh, uh, there uh, and sued the website for the job. Thank you. Um, uh, it was a comment uh, in the start of uh, this uh, conference um, when uh, Petrar uh, enumerates uh, some major roots of the humor um, misunderstandings. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I believe uh, Petrar, uh, it's um, uh, uh, I um, am in the in the game with uh, Petrar because uh, he said uh, he said uh, um, last but not least, uh, if, if I remember, the confusion between fake news from flow and uh, humor persists. The VIPs used to digression of the tabloids news. Um, if you are um, in a code, <laughs> yes, my obsession, social code, social uh, lectures, uh, social uh, knowledge, I, I don't know, uh, codes uh, are important, codes, uh, how to um, uh, describe and uh, um, classif classify uh, the, the reality. It's impossible to, um, to understand uh, how uh, how uh, how humor uh, a particular um, uh, a particular um, social code and particular um, um, uh, translate a particular uh, mood to translate uh, yeah. code to translate the reality. Um, and another, another uh, maybe uh, you laugh uh, when uh, someone else uh, is uh, in uh, in the in the focus of Times New Roman, and uh, uh, but uh, when uh, you are in the focus of Times New Roman, uh, is not uh, be uh, su uh, such uh, <laughs> I don't know funny. Um, it's a certain public uh, duplicity, you know. It's, um, yes, uh, social code, uh, it's uh, maybe personal uh, problem. You have a personal problem. <laughs> uh, 
it's a psychic you know catharsis or uh, uh, i don't know uh, catharsis of uh, or uh, discomfort anxiety it's uh, is the same maybe in in a moment but if you don't understand the the jokes go to the anxiety not go to the catharsis you don't uh, solve uh, uh, the problem and uh, uh, it's an it's a question why times new uh, roman or katsavenchi uh, or i don't know le uh, uh, goes and uh, uh, found find me uh, the victim i'm not the victim i'm the the best in the world <laughs> Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I, I, I believe uh, Noel uh, Carroll and uh, his uh, uh, his um, his research about humor um, said, uh, and I join uh, join uh, this uh, game sociologically. Uh, the the this research it was uh, my favorite uh, because uh, noel carroll uh, said it's fiction if you don't uh, understand uh, uh, humor is not uh, is not reality it's fiction it's uh, mentality it's uh, i don't know a classification one of uh, uh, of thousands classification you don't understand uh, humor. Humor is not uh, the, the, the dead of the world or uh, the end of the world. It's only one, one classification in a multiple uh, classification. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, your question and for the answer. Uh, so maybe we can move further to other questions or remarks from our audience. Well, um, I might say that I noticed uh, that you mentioned the difference between humor and dark humor. And also at a certain point in your presentation, you said that uh, the social media uh, pressure corrupts humor. Can you comment more on this idea that the social media pressure leads to a corruption of humor? In what ways, maybe? Uh, it's like in life. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> when you are uh, in a community, in a, uh, I, I said uh, the, the term um, a community of practice, you are in a community, you are uh, in the middle of the community and uh, you, are, uh, you have uh, a pressure how to are in or out this community. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You stay in, you must uh, uh, go and uh, fast uh, classify, uh, go and uh, uh, give uh, uh, this community uh, fast classification. I'm the best or I'm not the best. It's a big problem of uh, this kind of community. In the social media, there are, uh, uh, I said, uh, multiple, uh, multiple users, multiple mm -hmm. tribes, communities, yes. yes. And, uh, they are all the, all the time uh, uh, in, uh, in contact, direct or life contact leave uh, contact and you are in or out and times new roman is a yes a satirical uh, site uh, blog uh, uh, and uh, they are in um, in um, uh, uh, in the center of uh, view uh, center of uh, this kind of uh, controversial dilemmas uh, mm -hmm. and you are there <laughs> on online in the middle and all the time uh, these uh, tribes or these uh, users uh, want uh, want to uh, give you uh, give uh, you give uh, the best classification the they want to um, 
they want to um, rostog să se rostogolească de râs, să se uh, because mm-hmm. they they know uh, the classification, the basis uh, classifications, uh, words, uh, uh, etiquettes, uh, classification about an event, but. It's a pressure of social media with these multiple users and uh, multiple uh, tribes. And if you uh, lost uh, your uh, center, uh, center, uh, um, I don't know, uh, place in uh, mm-hmm. their uh, their uh, hearts, on their minds, uh, <laughs> you are uh, you have a. I don't know, uh, a feeling of uh, lost the world. And you're excluded. You are uh, only in the middle of audience, uh, in the middle of uh, every uh, everyone, in the middle of tribes, users. And they want, I want now a big joke to laugh and laugh and laugh. And yes, in the Dragnas, uh, this uh, Congress, uh, the, uh, it was, uh, it was obviously, uh, it was um, uh, a situation, laugh, laughing situation, funny situation. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe funny is uh, not so drastic, uh, it's a uh, uh, penibular situation. <laughs> With uh, all this, uh, it's not a moment to remember uh, all this event, but it was a um, um, penibil situation. It's uh, uh, yes, an awkward a political penibil situation. And, uh, the pressure of uh, online communities was uh, was big, <laughs> um, and Times New Roman. It's there in the online communities. And if you are uh, yes. in the Definitely. center, <laughs> yes, I don't repeat the, the situation. Yes, uh, well, I think. Oblige, you, you are in the middle and you must touch the reality with uh, gravity and uh, uh, touch with, uh, you, you want to destroy, <laughs> yes, to destroy this penible uh, situation and uh, uh, dislock on the minds and the, the hearts, this penible situation, and uh, maybe uh, put your uh, funny jokes there. And uh, uh, this, this is catharsis, yes? <laughs> you resolve the, the situation in this uh, uh, social, uh, social uh, online uh, movement. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, humor also... Maybe it's not uh, uh, ethical all the time, mm-hmm. but uh, exactly. I, I, um, maybe I, I don't uh, explain, uh, but in uh, this pressure, you want to, yes, to dislock uh, a situation, uh, a penible situation, and uh, put another, another reality, funny, uh, mm-hmm. more fast food uh, <laughs> uh, situation uh, put uh, there. So humor is also a coping mechanism, if I might yes, refer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> like and, uh, w- with another uh, uh, humor uh, uh, puts uh, um, with another, uh, I don't know, feeling maybe. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's well, the same. Maybe it's the same feeling, uh, a penible uh, situation and uh, humor situation. But if you are, uh, if you are Times New Roman or Catavenge or I don't know, uh, Le Canard uh, uh, wants uh, to uh, to dislock the the situation. This. Uh, situation uh, with another reality, humoristic reality, humoristic point of view. Uh, yes, well, thank you very it's much. Not, uh, it's not a bad, uh, <laughs> but uh, is uh, is a competition, a great competition. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, we still have time for one last remark, if there are any from the audience. 
If you allow me, Bianca, just yes, a short commentary related to previous discussion that I like very much. And uh, uh, during uh, your comments, I remember uh, the last scene of the movie, The Zorba the Greek, you know? Yes. And yes. Uh, when Zorba, uh, it's quietly surprised by the expression that uh, they see on the face of the, his friends. Actually, his friends laugh. It's the first time in the movie that his friends laugh. And his... And this is very surprising for Zorba because it's a, a very embarrassing situation, you know. And um, and I also uh, think uh, that um, um, humor it's um, um, it's uh, humanizes, if you want. The semiotic animal that is necessary human has a sense of humor. And just because it's good to distinguish between various forms of humor and other types of messages that you mentioned already, let me recommend the, uh, the book, The Language of Humor, Verbal, Visual, and Physical Humor, wrote by, uh, by um, um, Ari Sauer, I think, and Paul Boisak in 2018, which I think will be useful, at least uh, for the um, uh, theoretical back, uh, background of your study. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you. I really thank enjoyed you this presentation. Thank you. Yes, well, uh, thank you for, for the first presentation. We started the panel uh, um, on contemporary satirical humor, internet memes and mean meanings. Uh, so we move along to our session with the second presentation. So please give a warm welcome to the next speakers, Elena negra uh, Well, I also noted Juana Stefanice because it is the co-author of, uh, of uh, the, um, uh, the presentation on the mimification of the first female prime minister in Romania, trivi trivi trivialization and satire in politics. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, let me give a brief introduction to Elena. Elena negra Busioc is an associate professor, PhD within the College of Communication and Public Relations uh, at the National University of Political Studies and Public Administration in Romania. Her research is focused on discourse analysis, EU communication metaphors, and populism. She is a member of the EU Communication Studies Lab within the Center for Research in Communication and was the beneficiary of a Fulbright Senior Award grant at Portland State University, the United States of America. Elena, you have the floor. Thank you, Bianca. Uh, can I share my screen now? Yeah, I am I allowed? To? Yeah. Yes, sure, no, sure, you I can share it. Okay, I don't know, I... Um, uh, I don't know if uh, the share screen work. it's active, so <laughs> doesn't seem to work. It's not know. working. Let's, no, I'll try uh, again. Uh... <laughs> Maybe we should have done this before when we had a little bit of time. So uh, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, it doesn't seem to work from my, I don't know why. Do you have the PowerPoint presentation open? Yeah, 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 I do have it's it. Opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't see it, maybe. Nope. Let me, can... let me try again, uh, or just one second. I don't, I don't, I don't see it, yeah. No, doesn't seem to work. So uh, can I briefly send it to you and maybe you can upload it? Bianca? Yes, sure, sure. All right. I hope uh, that it will work because I <laughs> didn't really uh, had the time to exercise, but yes, please send me. I will send it right now. Uh, and I'm sorry for this, but uh, um, I do think I should have, uh, I should have uh, checked this before. Um, you have my email, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I already. It's just this one. Come on. The secret is uh, to, to have only one PowerPoint open because otherwise it's just one PowerPoint open. My, my one. PowerPoint. I mean the uh, only the um, the ones the one that I want to share share it with you guys. I send it. 
Okay, just a second. Okay, so. Yes, now I'm downloading it and I will just project I'm, it. Again, I'm so sorry for this. Anyways, just uh, uh, before uh, Bianca downloads the material, I just want to uh, say that uh, the memes that uh, um, we analyzed, me and my colleague, uh, um, Juana Stefanica, um, were uh, uh, heavily distributed by um, Times in Roman as well. Um, um, and uh, I, I, I don't know. To my knowledge, the tap, the the tar, the yes, the target of the means, uh, the former prime minister of Romania, Viorica Dancila, she hasn't sued uh, anyone else. No, she hasn't sued Times New Roman, at least uh, um, uh, from what I know. Okay. Yes, I have the okay. same problem. I do not see the PowerPoint even though here. So I will try to share my desktop. Oh. Yeah. I don't oh. know. I mean, never happened to me before. Yeah, not being neither. able to share. You are seeing my desktop now or not? No. No. Just a second. Maybe Elena, you try to convert to the PDF and uh, then you share the whole screen. Yeah, Maybe I can do that. this work in this way. Yes. How do you think? Just a second. I, I will try something to see if it works, but oh I have a problem with the system preferences. Okay, so that 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 was the problem. Um, okay, I don't know what's that. That I encountered as well. I don't know what's that. I don't know why it's not working, but uh, I'll do Bianca, what... Elena, try to make PDF. Yes, I'll do that. Documents I'll and just do then that. Uh, project to the, on the whole screen. Yeah, I tried both the whole, the, you know, um, share the screen, share the PowerPoint, and uh, it didn't work, but I'll try what you said. Just a second. Yes, I'm trying to do that. Or maybe you can uh, save the PPT in uh, PDF. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do now. Okay. And it's here. Uh, and now, um, Bianca, can I share it? I'm trying to share the. Uh, uh, I no, I can't. No, me too. I have the same problem, so I hope we will manage to. <laughs> I can't. I, I did the PDF, as you said, um, uh, Sorin, but I can't share it. It's something related to the privacy and to the firewall. It's not related to the document uh, by itself. <laughs> it's related to Zoom and something that we didn't set. I see a host here. Bianca, are you the host? No, I'm not I, the host. Maybe. I am the host. Please send it to me. Uh, exactly. Florin.0.aroncomunicare.ro Okay. okay. I will, Florin? Florin, I will write it in the chat. Please. Thank yes, you. Yes, please. 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 Because I, I will uh, have the same problem because I have to project my presentation so soon after. So. Florin.0.aroncomunicare.ro Is it zero or zero? Or Z Z Zeru, Zeru. Because you said you yeah, write yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> I write it bad. <laughs> I'm not a god. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'll send you the uh, PDF, right, Florin? Yes. Okay. Or the PPT, or both, and I will try to put one uh, oh, okay. of them. All right. So uh, this, it's, yes. Try this quickly. I'll send you the PPT as well, but try this. Okay, I will wait for the mail to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've, I've got the... Okay. Does it work? 
I hope that it will <laughs> work because yeah, I, I really projected a lot of presentation on Zoom, but I didn't have this, uh, this problem either. until now. First time, but uh, Bianca, there's a first time for everything. I wish it, it wasn't now when I have to present because uh, it's really, really embarrassing. The document opened and now I try to share the screen. Yes. It, uh... Yes, it's worked. Florina, oh, finally. Will... Thank you, Florina. I will also send you my presentation. Sorry. Please, please, please. Thank you. All so, right. So thank you, Florina. Again, I'm so sorry welcome. for this uh, uh, problem that uh, that I had with, uh, with the presentation. Uh, Juana Stefanica, my colleague, and I, we, um, um, we analyzed, we wanted to look at the uh, means uh, targeting the first uh, Romanian, uh, uh, the first Romanian uh, female prime minister, Viorica Dancila. A little bit of context for, uh, for the, um, uh, the, the ones that uh, are not familiar with, uh, with Romanian politics. If you can go to the next slide. Please, Florine. All right, just briefly, as I said, she was the first and for now the only female uh, uh, prime minister. And uh, since her appointment as the head of the government in January 2018, until her resignation uh, in, after losing the presidential um, uh, elections in November 2019, she was the preferred target of internet memes. There are so many internet memes uh, targeting the Danchilla, she's kind of uh, 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 like so a magnet, a meme all magnet. All presented have uh, on um, to finish the presentation today. Oh, okay, Sorry? I'm surprised you are very quickly. Sorry, okay. I, I think we have the mic and, um... turned on. Just to say yes. <laughs> <Salt>. <laughs> okay, so as I said, she was the preferred target of internet memes, and um, there's I we could even uh, highlight uh, a sort of a subgenre of uh, internet memes in Romania, Dancila memes. Actually, very recently, as it happened, she has been nominated as the um, sort of a, uh, a counselor to the, um, uh, to the governor of the Romanian bank. And again, the internet uh, um, uh, uh, bonded in uh, memes with Dancila. So go to the next, uh, please. This is just one example of uh, Dancila memes. And um, uh, she, she is Viorica Dancila. And the text is uh, a very um, uh, not uh, appreciated uh, error, grammatical error in Romania. And she is known to have done lots of those. Go to the next slide. Uh, all right. So, with this paper, with a study, we draw an existing literature on internet means as an alternative form of communication in the digital era. Um, the on internet means as uh, encouraging public participation and political means actually are considered in the literature a form of uh, political per, uh, participation, especially if we uh, look at the uh, work by Lim Limor Schiffman. What is also interesting for, for our study is the fact that uh, internet memes appear in groups. That's why we can, we can talk about the Nchila memes. They are not, um, they are not uh, uh, individual uh, creation. They do not, uh, they don't have su su success, so much success individually, but as a, a, a group sharing a common language and appealing to a collective. And of course, we also um, uh, uh, draw on the uh, virality of internet memes that can only, they can only actually um, uh, thrive to, through sharing, spreading and mutating. Next, please. All right. There's a genre of uh, internet memes, and these are political memes. They have been quite ex extensively analyzed in the literature. And uh, political memes um, are used to enhance political action and citizen empowerment. Uh, think of, for instance, the Occupy Wall Street memes or um, the, um, uh, Ob the Obama 2008 uh, campaign memes. Yes, we can, Obama girl. And 
um, in, a, in addition to, a political, to political, political action enhancement and citizen empowerment, political means also increase persuasion. Um, next, please. And another, um, another theoretical approach that we consider for our study is the uh, involvement of satire in, uh, in memes. And we looked at what we, uh, uh, what we uh, consider, what we lab labeled as uh, satirical memes. They, this is a form of user-generated politi political uh, satire characterized by high spreadability and um, uh, replicability. Why is a satire, why are satirical memes um, uh, important? Well, uh, some say because they allow people to engage in politics by uh, uh, exploring and expressing their uh, uh, views on politics and politicians. And what is really important, they do this in a critical manner, or this is how uh, political uh, satirical memes are uh, supposed to work because they um, they uh, sat they um, satirize politics and they they encourage and engage people uh, critically and uh, uh, politically by using humor and this is what we uh, what we analyze go to the next slide please so basically our um, uh, our question, the questions that, uh, uh, that our uh, study is based on are these. Can mean satirizing politics uh, be um, considered a form of manifestation of political criticism or is there um, a diffusion, is there a creation so slowly a matter of entertainment? And um, uh, can uh, they potentially enhance uh, civic engagement and open up the political realm, or do they actually uh, trivialize politics? How did we do that? We uh, used the qualitative content analysis and we coded the uh, memes uh, into uh, categories category such as composition, target, strategies, and language used. Next, please. Our corpus was uh, consisted of uh, 110 memes taken from, take, taken from public Facebook pages. Um, we used a, a, um, a keyword-based uh, uh, search using uh, hashtags, such as the ones that you see on the screen. And uh, from uh, uh, the, the, the 110 memes that we uh, that we uh, uh, analyzed only well only I would say we discarded we, we only discarded six as being non-satirical the other ones uh, 104 we coded as uh, satirical memes next please all right so in uh, terms of classification of the analyzed memes we um, basically based our classification on uh, Schiffman's uh, um, uh, classification of, uh, of memes. And uh, um, she discusses basically three types of uh, photo-based memes, reaction Photoshop, stock uh, macros, and photo fades. And uh, in terms of photo-based memes, we um, identified uh, 67 image macros uh, uh, portraying uh, Danchila, 26 of these image macros without Danchila, without her uh, presence there, and 16 uh, photo manipulations. And we also had 10 colleges and one uh, cartoon. From a te technical standpoint, I just uh, uh, want to mention that image macros are basically, they are the majority of the memes and they are the, uh, sim the simplest to produce. Probably this explains why there are so many because uh, basically um, there's an image and you can do it. There are some uh, uh, websites that can help you um, create a meme based on um, uh, an, e a meme, an image uh, macro uh, uh, type of meme. All right, next please. Just a couple of examples. So these are the means that we analyzed. To the left, you see uh, an image macro uh, 
portraying Danchila. And uh, to her image, there's the text. And the text says it is chillier in the morning because the air spent the whole night outside. This is supposedly what Danchila said. And this is just a, a, a meme uh, that uh, um, uh, basically, in this case, the target of uh, satire is her. Um, her lack of uh, knowledge or uh, her, uh, um, uh, her uh, lack of education. And to the uh, right, you see an uh, image macro without Denchila. And basically, there's just a popular pop culture, um, uh, pop culture um, image uh, uh, with uh, uh, the text that involves a reference to um, Viorica Dancila and it, the text alludes, together with the image, alludes to her inaptitude as prime minister. Next, please. These are photo manipulation where Dancila, well, basically it's a photo that has been manipulated to include Dancila and uh, to the left, uh, basically the, uh, the uh, meme alludes to her, again, to her uh, uh, misfit as prime minister, she would be better fit to uh, work the cashier at the uh, supermarket. And to the right, um, this is interesting because she is uh, basically the meme alludes to her, um, I don't know how to put it, to her uh, um, uh, megalomany grandeur. She, this is a, a, a painting of uh, Napoleon and uh, the face of the uh, 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 French emperor is, um, is um, uh, replaced uh, uh, by her face, but she, this is uh, just a contradiction. She, the meme alludes to the idea that she is in no position to uh, aspire to the, um, uh, to the uh, um, political relevance of Napoleon. Next, please. All right, so as I said, we analyzed these 104 satirical memes targeting the Danchila. And in terms of targets of satire, we identify this list. And by far, the preferred targets of, uh, of the uh, satire in the analyzed memes were Danchila's lack of education. So uh, 44 of the of, out of the uh, 104 uh, targeted this uh, um, uh, aspect. Um, then her inaptitude as prime minister and uh, uh, the um, uh, lack of polit political knowledge and real political power, she was considered a proxy for the party's then leader, uh, uh, Livio Dragna, who is really uh, leading from the shadows and the ones that you, uh, you uh, see there. Next. Just some examples of um, of uh, memes uh, uh, targeting Danchila's lack of education. To the left, you see uh, the meme uh, uh, sarcastically, there's a, also a sarcastic uh, modification of her uh, name. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, an, uh, an, uh, that's a hint to her lack of education. And to the right, you see a meme where Basically, the target of the satire is her inaptitude as prime minister. Uh, she would uh, be better off as a housewife canning uh, uh, pickles. All right, uh, next. In terms of satirical techniques that we identify in the corpus, sarcasm was one of them, uh, hyperbole, especially exaggeration of Danchila's poor intellectual capability. Verbal and situational irony and metaphor. Uh, next. As for the type of language, and I uh, would like to, I just have a couple more uh, slides, and I would like to um, uh, insist a little bit on language. Um, well, the uh, expression that used to satirize in Chile, yes, they are funny, uh, most of them, but at the same time, uh, some of them are really offensive and aggressive, and many means also use objective, uh, uh, object, objectionable language and gestures, even the middle finger. Some um, use offensive, misogynistic, and even sexist language uh, to uh, mock Danchila, and we kind of 
we uh, we are trying right now while writing the paper to um, uh, to explore the possibility of making an argument that some of these memes are uh, uh, hateful can be considered hateful um, memes and uh, the, for instance yes thank you uh, to the left you have a, a meme where um, I, I can even uh, I can't really translate this. Uh, this meme is actually says, um, I am stupider than myself to the left. There's a reference to a, a, a folk song. And then she, uh, she basically says about herself in this meme, I am stupider than uh, myself, which is really, um, uh, really an offensive, very offensive expression. And to the, uh, to the right, the text, uh, reads, I am the village idiot appointed head of state, which is, uh, and also the image with uh, the mob suggesting that, uh, well, uh, there, uh, there isn't much under her hair. These we consider to be really uh, offensive in, uh, occurrences, instances of offensive and uh, aggressive uh, uh, language. Next, please. Again, as I said, this offensive language is uh, uh, is um, uh, is backed up, if I may say so, by uh, even uh, offensive gestures such as the middle finger and um, uh, belittlement, metaphorical framings uh, that actually belittle Danchilla. So a metaphoric framing between Danchilla and uh, a monkey or an ape actually. Uh, to add a little bit of context, this was um, this was this uh, metaphorical association that Nchila is a monkey or a baboon was uh, uh, favored by uh, a uh, yes a description that one of a very renowned Romanian journalist Tudor Popescu uh, Christian Tudor Popescu at some point at the beginning of her of her mandate he said that. Well, she is. Uh, she is. Uh, she looks like a baboon, <laughs> referring to her hairdo, and that stuck. Actually, that uh, that uh, uh, characterization stuck in, uh, especially among uh, among uh, user uh, generator in uh, social media, and mm, uh, lots of meme memes uh, also uh, picked up on this uh, uh, association. And now to conclude, next please, we would say that the satirical memes, in theory, they are supposed to bring politics and politicians closer to the public, especially younger generation. And there are studies, there, are recent, there is a recent study by uh, uh, Mark Brooks uh, in, in the Netherlands. Actually, the study um, incorporated many, uh, um, many uh, European countries, Romania is not included. And um, uh, he, um, uh, he uh, makes an argument that basically satire is consumed especially by young people so we uh, would be uh, uh, in our uh, uh, right to uh, on the right path to assume that satirical means are also consumed mostly by um, uh, young people yes the chila means the ones that we analyze are funny but in many cases the offensive language and association cancel their uh, uh, criticizing force and even they even may undermine uh, their entertainment uh, uh, value um, because um, the uh, satire that is um, that is uh, largely of largely offensive in the memes that we analyzed including misogynistic uh, this sometimes um, uh, undermines the humor display so uh, basically uh, the offensive humor on which uh, uh, sat satire builds undermines the pleasure of laughter as uh, my uh, as the uh, uh, mr istador uh, mentioned earlier and the um, uh, and also undermines the pleasure of laughter, la laughter and the amusement derived from any of these memes and um, um, we we are trying to make this argument that uh, many many of the memes in which satire is offensive, aggressive, even misogynistic, 
and even sexist, may activate reaction of disapproval, rejection, and even hostility on the part of the audience. We would speculate a particularly female audience. But this is just a speculation. And we also, this is what we uh, would like to uh, highlight, that there is no political criticism underlying satirical memes targeting Danchila as a moron, an empty-headed middle-aged woman who's better off in the kitchen. Rather, there seems to be a, a reinform, reinforcement of a long-standing st stereotype uh, that politics is a man, man's job. And yes, Danchila uh, may not be uh, the uh, fittest woman to enter, politi to enter politics and to hold a high office, but this does not make satirical memes using um, offensive and misogynistic language um, um, uh, uh, rep, um, this, does, this does not make these memes uh, spur conversation and engagement with politics uh, uh, from the part of uh, young, uh, young people. Thank you. This was it. Thank you very much, Elena, for your and thank you, Florine, for your help. presentation. <laughs> uh, okay. Welcome. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that we managed to solve the technical difficulties. So um, now I believe that uh, we can give the floor to questions. We have five minutes for a Q&A session around the presentation. So please feel free to address any questions, uh, suggestions, remarks to our speaker. Are there any questions? Can I, I uh, can I yes. ask a question? Uh, how, how did uh, you find the memes? Yes. Can I? On what uh, platform? On Facebook, Google? Can I okay. answer? Yes. We, uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, this was uh, the, the memes, the corpus was built uh, from memes uh, uh, drawn from Facebook, public pages on Facebook. And we did a, a search using, a, 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 as I said, a keyword search with hashtag Danchila, Veorica, Vasilika. And we used, in order to aggregate all these, we used uh, the CrowdTangle platform. This is a search engine and mm -hmm. it search, it pulls out content from uh, public, uh, public pages and groups, but we only use Facebook, Facebook pages. So public Facebook pages. So we don't know if um, these were the ones that circulated in, private, uh, like on WhatsApp or among uh, uh, people uh, having their account, Facebook account private, but we may speculate because of the, uh, because of the, um, because of their uh, success. I mean, there were many actually much more than 110, but we discarded those who, uh, who were uh, du duplicates. Mm -hmm. So we speculate that um, these were the ones that uh, were, um, were um, you know, most likely to, to uh, be viral. And the time frame was uh, uh, start of her uh, appointment as a prime minister 2008 and uh, until uh, her resign, uh, her um, yeah, resignation in 2019 at the end of 2019. Thank you. I know CrowdTangle is a very powerful uh, tool. Yeah, but so. only it only works for public pages, so it doesn't get yes, yes. content from private. Yes, I know, but it's uh, very useful. Thank you. Yes, it is indeed very useful for private pages or private groups. You have to do that manually, so it's not so easy. I know because I investigated the private group, so I had that uh, problem in a way. Uh, but I wanted to ask you if you also looked at the reactions, for instance, if you have noticed the polarization between the ones who sustain or who are um, maybe um, fancying these types of memes and the others who contest the memes because of the fact that, okay, they are related to sexist discourses, uh, also hateful speech and so on. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good point. And this would be the next step, especially for the, we didn't look at this for this particular, uh, um, particular um, study, but we uh, quickly realized that in order to say something 
about the you know the aggressive the misogynistic we need to look at the reaction so we're gonna we're gonna um, uh, reduce our corpus so only for the ones that we consider based on language uh, uh, and image the ones that we consider um, to be uh, offensive or <laughs> even sexist for those we're gonna look at uh, we're gonna take into account the uh, reactions as well uh, I can say like just as um, uh, um, the impressions that we got from the impression that we got from looking at those yeah pretty much what is interesting on social media is that you don't get that much um, that much uh, rejection that much contestation as you would expect so comments tend to uh, rally the uh, the um, uh, the meme i mean tend to uh, tend to be uh, tend to approve of the meal uh, of the meme or even uh, come with uh, variations mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. uh, mimetics that's how it works yes and remixes that's, sur um. that's surprising for us but yeah that's how it uh, works with i don't know if it's the target i mean if it's her or if it's the uh, fact that she, you know, female politics for female there, there's studies we... have, have shown, sorry, studies have shown, and we are trying to pin this as a sort of symbolic violence. Mm -hmm. Studies have shown that it, in, in politics, symbolic violence um, uh, is more, um, uh, is, applies more to female politicians than to men politicians. And just to, um, and this is my final, we actually looked because it was a very challenging uh, political situation with this, uh, her mandate. So she is the third prime minister within a year. This, uh, the, the, the party, the National uh, Social Democratic Party. So they won the election in, uh, in 2000, at the end of 2016. So they, they were the party to, uh, to uh, uh, propose the prime minister. And they went with two other proposal men, uh, uh, Grindano and Tudose. So before then Chile, there were two other prime minister within less than one year. So it was a really, a, and we looked at means of mm -hmm. those men prime minister. First of all, they are lots, they are significantly fewer than, than Chile means, so significantly fewer, the ones that we could uh, take out from Crowd Tangle, and they do not, with Grindano, it's only, they do not uh, target uh, uh, their uh, lack of education or their, uh, uh, their uh, misfit as, uh, their inaptitude as prime minister, no. With Grindano, there's nothing basically like very huge, just uh, that he was a proxy. And with uh, Tudose, the, the other man, prime, male prime minister, only that she was a drunk, but that's it. That he was a drunk, that's it. So no lack of education, no no clothing style, no hairdo, hairdo sorry, like with Danchila. These are uh, personal traits. These are not uh, political or... Uh, how should I say? Uh, Public, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry for this long answer. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, uh, for your answer. Unfortunately, we do not have time for any remarks, but maybe we will come back at the end of the session. So now uh, moving along, I will give the floor to myself. <laughs> so Florine, please help me on projecting the presentation. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so we move along uh, from... Uh, uh, from uh, political memes to COVID-19 internet-related memes. Uh, uh, I will present uh, a research that I made on the unbearable lightness of the COVID-19 internet memes in Romania coming from a social semiotic approach. Next, please. Yes, well, uh, here, I will, here I would like to present the context because uh, uh, I wanted to see uh, how the internet memes and jokes around the pandemic situation have evolved uh, from March 2020 when there was a state of emergency declared in Romania. Uh, so um, uh, there, was also, there were also Facebook groups that started uh, to gather around coronavirus uh, jokes. So I, as you will see further, I will analyze a group that was mentioned, uh, that mentioned those memes. And here are some of the most uh, 
uh, most successful memes uh, at the beginning of the pandemic situation. Uh, on the left side, uh, you are seeing a meme that was uh, shared by uh, the political scientist Vladimir Tismanianu, which was intensely contested and discussed uh, uh, in, the, um, in the public sphere, especially because, uh, as you can see, here is the translation, uh, it relates in a way to anti-Roma discourses because Sandarei is a town situated in southern Romania with a very important Roma community. And he referred to the fact that uh, uh, all flights are canceled. Well, the Tsandare airport, of course, it does not exist. It is a very small, uh, uh, small town uh, in the southern of Romania. Uh, but he referred to the fact uh, that uh, there was a quarantine there. And of course, there is a very strong Roma community, as we can see from the image. So uh, this meme was catalogated as racist from the Romanian press. And a lot of journalists have written articles contesting this meme. Of course, uh, an important thing is related to the reaction that Vladimir Tismanianu had after he published this meme. He erased it from his Facebook account, uh, mentioning the fact that he believed that it was, uh, it was uh, very funny and it was... Um, he didn't have any racist intentions because he does not live in Romania anymore. He is a professor in the universe in, at a university from the USA. So he tried to uh, dissociate himself from this meme that he shared, and that was intensely contested, especially because in the Romanian uh, media in the, in, and in the Romanian public space, we still have this anti-Roma discourses. I proved uh, this, um, this issue, this uh, hypothesis, if I might say, in my PhD thesis, where I proved that uh, Romanian migrants are mainly related and uh, tied to anti-Roma discourses because a lot of, um, a lot of uh, Romanian media talk and uh, discuss about the fact that uh, uh, the Romanian migrants uh, are going in different countries from Europe, uh, especially for the social benefits idea. And a lot of the migrants, uh, a lot of uh, the Romanian migrants are also coming from the Roma community. So the Romanian media, in fact, reinforces anti-Roma discourses coming from other, uh, other uh, climates. Uh, and in this situation, we can see the same situation, but of course, uh, here we have a public figure that shares this meme. On the um, on the right on the right side of this um, slide, you can see another meme, uh, which I have to explain a little bit because it has something to do with the Romanian language. Uh, so this is a meme uh, that was intensely shared on the internet, uh, especially related to the COVID nineteen restrictions. When you can see the Romanian police officer. Uh, signing, um, uh, signing, maybe, uh, and uh, trying to uh, to give um, uh, to to give uh, and punish the people that do not respect the rules or the COVID nineteen restrictions. So here you can see that uh, this is an image from the Little Prince, with which uh, is a very known novel. But the Little Prince has transformed in the little one that got caught, because a prince. Uh, in the Romanian language, prince and got caught are very close. It's just only one letter that, um, that makes them separate and have a different meaning. So that is why uh, this function at the level of the text and also at the level of the image. Well, moving further, this is only the context that I wanted to introduce you in. Well, um, let's start uh, from a short analytical framework on the meme subject. So um, the term meme was first coined, was first coined by Richard Dawkins, uh, who mentioned uh, in his book, The Selfie Gene, that meme is a cultural unit that moves from one person to another like a gene in biology. So we still have uh, this uh, uh, strong anchoration into biology. So first of all, memes are also related to the virus metaphor because they circulate on the internet and they are spread like a virus spreads. So of course, I know that this metaphor maybe is not so appropriate now, but uh, it, it, it is a very important uh, metaphor in order to understand how memes spreads across the internet. Well, uh, the Imagine community has reconfigured nowadays. Uh, and if we start from Anderson, we reach today on the do-it-yourself citizenship, 
where the focus is on the fact that uh, we live in a participatory culture where each user can be the producer and the receiver of the content in the same time. So in a way, we construct our own citizenship, citizenship according to maybe the uh, communities, uh, the interpretive communities we are part of. So uh, digital platforms are an import, have an important role here. So we can talk about the echo chamber effect that also applies to meme because we tend to see some specific memes uh, political maybe, as it was the case uh, from, uh, from the previous presentation with Viorica Dancilo, or maybe we can see some memes uh, that are related to our hobbies. So the echo chamber effect functions here as well, and uh, this uh, reinforces in a way our own beliefs uh, this, by discrediting other relevant voices. So we will see memes that uh, reinforce our own beliefs mainly. Uh, of course, memes are also virtual places because they display a struggle for meaning. And if we take into account Schiffman's um, definition, internet memes uh, are also groups of digital items that are sharing also common characteristics and are created with the awareness of each other. Well, moving further, uh, I would also like to discuss memes from a linguistic perspective because memes are also performative acts. Uh, we can talk about the elocutionary act when uh, uh, performing a meme because, uh, of course, the producer of the meme is very important, but also the spreaders. The spreaders have a very important role here because they move with the message further. Of course, um, the message can be modified by the spreaders because they can come up with their own uh, interpretation. So memes are also products of contemporary participatory culture. And here I would like to mention Henry Jenkins, who is the author of this very important concept uh, in which we can talk about a convergence culture because everyone generates and can be a generator of memes. So memes uh, are, have also a variety of social, cultural, and political purposes leading to interpersonal settings and political discourses. They are also forms of cultural capital in web-based web community. And here I am referring to Pierre Bourdieu's uh, classification. And memes uh, depart from the original image they manipulate, as we can see at Milner in, uh, and Schiffman. So moving further, uh, I would like to address uh, um, a remark that was made by Francesco Mangiapane in analyzing the Italian memes around the COVID-19 uh, situation. So he mentioned that the most important ingredient of memes is repetition because images are modified and repeated to suggest a meaning depending on the social or political context. Of course, that we live in an era driven by hypermimetic logic and memes also relate to postmodern folklore because we can see shared norms and value constructed through cultural artifacts such as Photoshop or other editing um, softwares that manipulate the image. Okay, moving further. Uh, internet memes are also spaces, say spaces of polyvocal expression if we think from a Bactinian perspective, because we have multiple opinions and identities that are negotiated. Uh, and here I just mentioned some of uh, the popular memes that you can find on Know Your Meme as well. Uh, I want to come back to Schiffman, to Limar Schiffman, who discusses two important practices around memes. The first one is mimicry, which relates to recreating specific texts. And uh, of course, it relates to intertextuality. And the second one, second one is remixing because it relates to the technological manipulation of images. And we can see that a lot of memes use this technological manipulation in order to recreate some meanings. Moving further, well, memes are also syncretic texts from a semiotic perspective because they combine verbal, visual, and audiovisual components. They are created through several types and degrees of interventions upon pre existing text. And that is why we can talk about a hypertext, according to Gerard Genet, because, of course, they use, uh, they use techniques such as extraction, transformation, and imitation. Well, according to Manovich, uh, digital culture is a remix culture, and we have seen, and we will see how the remix is used in recreating memes around the pandemic situation. And I will, I would like to emphasize that there are a lot of researchers on coronavirus memes. Uh, well, more recently, mainly, and uh, here you can see some uh, some of the key authors that discuss memes about COVID nineteen masks from a multimodal perspective, and also political memes from a narrative perspective. So moving further, 
uh, some other key aspects would be the fact that we can talk about the vernacular creativity, according to Bourge, uh, and also according to Mil Milner, memes are multimodal artifacts because they employ multiple modes of communication. Uh, the social semiotic approach to visuals, well, I'm using this because um, the interpersonal semiosis of images proves that image have a meaning by themselves. So we will see also the meanings that the image plays in the internet memes. Here, uh, the a key, a key element would be the, the one of semiotic resources, which relates to signifiers, observable actions and objects that have a theoretical semiotic potentials potential that is constituted by all their past users and all their potential uses. And this applies to internet memes as well, because we also have past and potential uses of the same meme. So uh, we will talk about three meta functions of the visual resources, represent representational, interactive and compositional. And uh, we, will, uh, we will employ this in the, um, in the um, research section. So moving further, I would like to address the research question. So I wanted to see what are the main memetic trends in the COVID-19 uh, internet memes in Romania. We will see that there are some specificities. Of course, there are some transnational memes because a lot of um, the members, a lot of members from that group that I mentioned earlier, uh, tried to share some memes that were international and transnational in a way. So uh, we will see that uh, besides this, we also have some cultural specific memes. The second research questions, how do the COVID-19 related internet memes construct collective identity discourses? And we will see that some of them relate only to specific situations. Uh, and what are the main semiotic resources employed in the COVID-19 internet memes and how are they organized? So these are the main research questions. Uh, so moving further, well, the data collection, I collected memes from March 2020 until May 2021 because I wanted to see the evolution of memes. Uh, I investigated 50 COVID-19 internet memes from the Facebook group Coronavirus Glume, Coronavirus Jokes, and also I investigated the meta discourses around the memes, uh, which means that I looked into the articles that were written by Romanian journalists, articles published on Libertata, on Scena Noa, and also uh, on other um, related websites. The social, I employed the social semiotic analysis. Here you can see the categories. Uh, I looked into the semiotic resources and the modality, and also into the Schiffman's categories, the content, which refers to ideas and ideologies incorporated in the text, the form, which relates to the composition of the message, and the stance, which relates to participation structures, keying, and communicative functions. So here are some of the most uh, important results of, uh, of uh, the analysis. You can move further to see the results. Okay, so um, uh, I, we, you, we can see here in a way uh, the evolution of the meme with the political officer that tries to sanction people who do not uh, respect the COVID-19 restrictions and measures in Romania. So the meme genre here is the remix meme we can see that it is used uh, in uh, movie scenes, such as the one from Lord of the Rings, and also uh, in art scenes, such as the one from The Last Supper. So uh, we can see that uh, moving further uh, and looking into the uh, third, uh, into the three uh, aspects that were mentioned by Limor, Limor Schiffman at the level of content, we can see that COVID-19 restrictions uh, are related uh, to uh, the arguments that were also mentioned in the press. The main theme is the Romanian government measures in response to COVID-19. We can see that the genre is remix. It relates also to popular culture. And also we can encounter here the poetic and metalingual functions because we have the appeal to intertextuality, to movies and also uh, to Lord of the Rings. In a way, the memes contest the position that is mediated in the public sphere. The position was that you have to follow the rules that were, uh, uh, were mentioned in the Romanian government and from the governmental position. Uh, and the memes uh, try to contest this rule with uh, employing the political officer in a completely different situation. And here we can see the semiotic resources, the political, politi police officer uh, uh, writing a penalty for not respecting COVID-19 restriction and the image being remixed several ways. 
Well, moving further to other results, we can see here the use of classical art memes uh, in relation to COVID-19 pandemics. Uh, and here, of course, we can see the explicit manipulation uh, of uh, the art content. Uh, we can see that uh, in the first image, this relates to vaccination, and we will see that there are a lot of memes on this. Uh, in the image from the middle, we have a philosophical approach. And uh, in the third image, uh, we can see that uh, it relates to influencers and to social media micro and macro influencers. So moving further, uh, the content, uh, here is the use of art pictures to create meaning and the main themes were vaccination, the use of Zoom and social media influencers. The remix relates to classical art memes, which is another genre that is used uh, on the internet and it was used now in relation to COVID-19. And the stance were the consequences of uh, COVID-19 situation. We can notice the use of expressive, poetic and metalingual functions. Another round of results, uh, relates uh, to the fact that uh, we have uh, conspiracy theories around COVID-19 vaccination. And you can see here uh, one of the memes that uh, was uh, intensely shared on the group and also discussed by the Romanian media. And here the genre was a remix meme. And of course the stance was the fact that uh, Bill Gates, uh, uh, well, in a way uh, it, it relates to the conspiracy theory that says that Bill Gates uh, has a trackable microchip uh, conspiracy. It also employs expressive, poetic, and metalingual, metalingual functions because uh, they relate to several discourses that were, uh, uh, were um, proliferated uh, in the international media. Uh, so, uh, of course, discourses related to uh, 5G networks, Bill Gates, and so on. Uh, and um, around the media discourses on COVID-19 internet memes, well, this uh, in this situation, uh, I've noticed that the Romanian journalists uh, uh, have, uh, uh, have tried uh, to come with this spectatorship of suffering, because in a way, uh, we, can see, uh, we can see that uh, we, the news are ecstatic, mentioning this, uh, uh, this global phenomenon that we are all experiencing in, and also mentioning um, some areas related to this spectatorship of suffering, as Julia Raki defines it. Uh, so uh, here is very important to understand that, uh, uh, of course, the suffering uh, is uh, put maybe in contrast with the humor related to memes. So internet memes related to COVID-19 reinforce anti-Roma discourses in the Romanian society. And here I mentioned the article written by Ciprian Nicola and Libertate around the racist meme published by Vladimir Tismanano. We can notice an us versus them rhetoric because uh, the Romanian public uh, has spread. So we have people that say that the meme is not racist and people that uh, say that it is racist and it should be punished in a way. So we also have a lot of yeast memes, especially in the Romanian setting. And this is also a mechanism of coping for Romanians during COVID-19 because of the lack of flour and yeast in the supermarket. So uh, moving to the discussion and conclusion, and this is the last idea, uh, I have encountered three important mimetic trends. One of them is the authority contestation, which relates to memes with police officer writing a penalty for not respecting COVID-19 restrictions, vaccine-related memes, and also anti-Roma and diaspora discourses. And here I want to mention the discourses around the Romanian migrants that went, uh, went in Germany to pick asparagus. Uh, it was a very polarized um, discourse uh, around this topic because they went there, especially when the COVID-19 restrictions uh, were the hardest. And of course, uh, this was um, a discussion around the roles and the power that the state has over its citizens. So the main topics addressed in the COVID-19 internet memes were politics, education, COVID-19 restrictions, vaccination, work from home, Netflix, and food delivery. Memes related to COVID-19 are also semioscapes, and we can talk about uh, those memes as performative texts, which link different interpretive communities, refashioning the global semioscape. And one last uh, question that I would like to open the uh, discussion session with would be the fact uh, that, and uh, the last slide, please, uh, would be the fact that um, uh, COVID-19 internet memes uh, may constitute spaces of polyvocal expression in which multiple opinions and identities are negotiated. And I would like to ask 
uh, to ask the audience and maybe to, to try to, to continue the conversation around this specific question, how do these internet memes constitute uh, spaces of polyvocal expression, and maybe what are the cultural specificities that we can address uh, in different countries. So maybe a cross-cultural approach would have been better. Thank you very much uh, for listening to my presentation. And now maybe we have uh, a few minutes uh, for the Q&A. Yes, just a second. Yes, well, we have maybe uh, Sorin, can you please tell me how many minutes, maybe two minutes, three minutes of QA? We have enough time, Bianca, because um, the next panel is cancelled. So uh, take the advantage and uh, enjoy your time, please. Oh, thank you very much. I was in a big hurry. So, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so if there are any questions, uh, remarks, uh, maybe suggestions, uh, I just have one question, and thank you for all the presentations. Um, it was a question that I heard a couple of days back, and uh, it was appropriate for this panel to ask um, what yes. a meme is. I mean, what is it called? It a meme and not a different word. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I we all know what memes are, but I Google it and I search it with a friend and I don't actually know what meme stands for. And that yes. is the question for the ladies of this panel. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I will start and then I will give uh, the, the floor to Elena. Well, first of all, if we look into Susan Blackmore, which is a key author in uh, this uh, meme, uh, in this meme uh, team or topic, well, memes relates uh, mainly to imitation practices. So that is why uh, this term is uh, maybe more appropriate to use it. Of course, if we look in, in the past and we think of the book that was published by Richard Dawkins, The Selfish Gene, well, he didn't use the term meme in relation to internet memes, but still that term applies to what happens in the cultural context. And he, more recently, he gave also a lecture in which he explains the fact that, okay, his term, even though it is from biology, it still connects to sociology and from a social cultural perspective, because we can talk about memes that spread into several cultures. That happened with the COVID-19 pandemic situation as well, because we can see a lot of memes that are transnational in nature. The meme with Bill Gates, for instance, it's not only in Romania, it's all around the globe. And OK, maybe we can relate in a way or another to that specific meme. But of course, it has a transnational nature. So the term meme, in fact, it developed uh, and uh, it was coined initially by Richard Dawkins with a different meaning, but now we can find some similarities from this biological perspective. So when we think of meme, we are thinking at a multidisciplinary perspective from biology, we look into arts, we look also into communication studies and we look into linguistics because as you can see, Limar Schiffman comes with this linguistic perspective. And she says that, of course, when we talk about memes, we have to talk about intertextuality because they remix different texts. And we have seen that they remix also scenes from the movies, from Lord of the Rings. Uh, they remix also maybe some important images from art, Mona Lisa, and so on. And they also remix uh, maybe some texts some captions that were used uh, in relation to other things. So of course, here we have the spreaders that have an important role. I didn't analyze how the reactions of the, those means and I wanted to, to say that this is the limit of my research because uh, this would be the next step to see the reactions and to see how did people reacted in a way to those uh, memes, especially uh, to the meme uh, that uh, was very controversial in nature, the meme that was shared by Vladimir Tismaneanu. I have noticed that there is a polarization in the Romanian public sphere, but I didn't have time to investigate the comments per se. So yes, when we talk about memes, we do have to have this inter, inter and multidisciplinary perspective coming from several disciplines and also from a semiotic perspective because we can notice the multiple voices that share 
maybe um, uh, an internet meme that is related to a very controversial topic. And uh, I try to see how do internet memes around the COVID-19 uh, context uh, are uh, maybe um, understood in this, uh, in this uh, situation. Uh, so, of course, uh, we have uh, to, to look with multiple lens when we talk about memes and to understand that, uh, okay, this uh, term has evolved over time and it evolves constantly. And also, if we look into Henry Jenkins' term of participatory culture and convergence culture, of course, that uh, the interpretive community is the one who gives meaning to the meme. And as Eugenie Stoder has mentioned, you have to be part of this community to understand the memes or the jokes. Otherwise, you do not get it. Okay, some are transnational in nature, but if we are talking about the cultural-based meme, well, uh, you have to explain the cultural context in order to understand why did uh, those memes spread? Because not all memes spread across the internet. And this is another very interesting topic. Not all memes become viral we still have this viral metaphor, only some of them. So not all memes manage to become successful or to generate humor. So uh, yeah, this is uh, maybe a very complex phenomenon that uh, should be watched from different perspectives uh, and uh, lenses. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Elena? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, Bianca, <laughs> covered all bases. I don't know if I... Uh, can add something else, but I do want to salute your question. That is really important because actually with memes, I think the um, every, it's so fashionable. Everybody talks about memes, memes everywhere. If politicians uh, uh, actually, uh, they even them themselves produce memes if we think mm -hmm. of political uh, discourse, but uh, celebrity as well. So memes, uh, uh, meme, this is a, uh, a very uh, maybe uh, an overused concept so that's why your question I think it's spot on and uh, in terms of definition even the even the um, uh, the one that we uh, the scholar that we uh, mentioned uh, Bianca and I we mentioned we mentioned so many times Lim or Shifuan she was the one that coin not not necessarily coin but that uh, put uh, meme, internet meme, on the sp into the spotlight. Spotlight, and she says that meme, this uh, concept is a, it, it is a conceptual troublemaker. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy to define it. But just to, um, uh, I don't want to um, to um, uh, uh, to say what Bianca already said. But yes, memes as opposed, I mean, as opposed to uh, uh, Dawkins gene meme metaphor, uh, they, those were units of biological information. These are units, memes are units of cultural transmission of cultural uh, um, information. So anything can be a meme, a video, um, uh, a pose, a clothing, think of B Bernie Sa Sanders memes, you know, mm -hmm. the mittens. Exactly, yeah. That's anything can be a meme. But what is important, and Bianca said, and I just want to emphasize this, uh, she actually mentioned it, uh, and Schiffman mentions it as well. With memes, human agency is crucial. It has to be, in order to become viral, so to spread, to become successful, be they humorous means or not, not all means are humorous, of course, they, they, there has to be someone to generate them and to circulate them and to uh, spread them. So the human agency is really important. This, there's an intention and I, that I'm coming back to your talk, Bianca. Thank you. That was super fascinating. Uh, you mentioned performative, performativity and performative uh, um, act. I think that's a really cool and really interesting and maybe underexplored approach when it comes to memes because memes are intentional. There is no, I don't think that there is, the, I don't think there's a meme that lacks intentions. Inten there's an intended message there. 
Of course, we cannot recuperate it because we can't go and uh, 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 pick up uh, someone's brains and you know go into his or her mind. But there's an intended message, and there's that intended um, 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 that's the intended force, the elocutionary force that you mentioned, that is really important and makes may may influence the success of uh, of a meme in terms of virality so it is a conceptual troublemaker but meme means anything that can be culturally replicated transmitted anything pretty much anything so yeah thank you yes thank well you. Thank, you. thank you very much uh, maybe if there are any other questions or remarks or suggestions around this very challenging topic? Yeah, so indeed a very interesting discussion about the signification of memes really as, uh, in my opinion, yes, indeed, uh, as uh, Elena rightly observes, uh, you are witnessing uh, the certain trivialism of the terms, memes. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding Firmilian uh, question and in prolonging Bianca answer, I would like um, to say that internet memes can be and should be conceived, I, I say, as a habit inducing science systems, incorporating processes that uh, involve asymmetrical variation as a significant practice, if you want, as Chris Teva will say in the digital age. From the perspectives of biosemiotic also, uh, things become even more interesting. Uh, it practically comes close to the original meaning of the one Dawkins originally refers to, but we can have the chance to discuss early. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for, for the remarks. Uh, maybe Elena, you would like to answer something on this or? Um, I, yes, I, uh, yes, sorry in that. I have to say, I don't know much about biosemiotics or, uh, or um, science relation is not my uh, territory and I just want, I don't, I, I would not step into uncharted territory, but I just want to mention something. Um, I think it's important, the human agency intentionality, but also the fact that they are, they come as a group. Uh, memes comes, you can't, you can't analyze, there's no, Point. I mean, I don't think that's a mean. There's, yeah, it's not uh, one uh, hit wonder. There, there is not uh, such a thing with memes. It can be one meme and one image, one image with text, for instance, and that's a meme. If it's not viral, if it's not replicated, if it's not, re if it, if it's not a part of a group of memes on the same topic, on the, it's not a meme. And that is an important uh, uh, difference from Dawkins' idea of gene and means. So that, that's an individual unit with the gene. That's an individual unit of transmission. Whereas with memes, that's a collective unit of transmission. So they come as a group. And that is, I think that says more about, um, about, their, uh, um, about the message, about the, the ones that uh, 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 the creators and the spreaders, you know, the community within which they um, they thrive. It says a lot about this uh, uh, this idea of uh, collective memes. And I just, if I may, since I'm talking, I don't want to uh, monopolize the discussion. But B Bianca, I love your uh, the uh, unbearable lightness, the Candera references, and everything. But I just, I, I cannot stop but wonder how important is that meme with, uh, with the, the crowds on, a, you know, the Sundaray crowds, yes, because yes. that is not about COVID-19. So I think COVID-19, so this uh, topic, the general, you know, the group that you analyze COVID-19 uh, memes, jokes, that it, they use this uh, pandemic or the situation as an excuse to enforce or reinforce uh, mm -hmm. deeper, mm -hmm. um, uh, deeper um, uh, layers of uh, discourse in the Romanian society. And that is one of them. 
racist. I think that deserves an analysis of, in its own. In itself, yes. Yes, <laughs> that, that particular meme. And especially the fact that the contestation and the reaction mm -hmm. of that scholar, yeah, Tismanano is a renowned uh, Romanian scholar and he has some, uh, he has, no, not some, he has international visibility and uh, uh, um, and I think that's that's important, you know, because you, you see, you cannot uh, spread, you know, you just uh, uh, sp spread, share a meme. That's why I said intentionality is in creation, but also mm -hmm. in spreading. You cannot dissociate. You do not do it as as if when you uh, share a meme with a certain message, you you are linked to that message, whether you like it or not. It's like endorsing someone. <laughs> you endorse an idea behind the meme. That's why I think this um, this um, uh, this approach from the from uh, from uh, uh, speech act theory is really important. Yes, well, thank you very much. Uh, I was uh, pretty passionate about this uh, this subject, uh, and uh, I really wanted to to see how the Romanian um, the Romanian society uh, managed uh, to address this very challenging meme uh, that was published by Vladimir Tismanian with the caption "very cool." So he also had a message spreading this meme further. Uh, but then he didn't uh, attribute the responsibility of sharing that uh, meme, even though there already was a print screen with that meme being shared, so uh, he deleted it, but uh, it was it was uh, not uh, it was not a real action because uh, a lot of people started already talking about it, and also the Romanian media addressed this idea that we are talking about the power discourse here, because the elites managed in a way to to discuss about uh, communities um, and to express their opinion in a way so of course the elites are giving their um, uh, their perspective over maybe my minorities such as the roma community in romania and uh, they are spreading that on the internet knowing exactly uh, what is the meaning of that meme even though they are trying to dissociate uh, from it uh, so there are also power discourses here, and we can talk about political discourses that we can we have seen with uh, the Viorica Dancila memes. Uh, uh, we can talk about uh, memes that maybe relate uh, to some social phenomenon, cultural phenomena. Uh, and if we come back to Richard Dawkins, well, he says that uh, maybe in future memes uh, will be. Uh, like the DNA, because they will transmit further and further and further in the public space, and people will discuss over it. So, of course, that we can talk about the dark side of the memes. Uh, we, we also have that, uh, that aspect here. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, from a biosemiotic perspective, uh, we can see the resemblance with what Richard Dawkins says. And okay, it's from biology, it's the DNA, but here we talk about the unit of cultural transmission that can spread over cultures. So maybe people that will come after us will talk about memes, maybe other types of memes, but they will still stay. So this is very important because we can also see the future perspective of dealing with memes. And also we can see the importance of the study of memes from a linguistic perspective and from other perspectives. Well, it's not, maybe it, it may seem, okay, why do we study memes? Because uh, some people laugh over the internet, they share it on IG and 4chan and this is it. Well, it is very important because they spread and they might bring communities together in a way. They can form communities. And I also discussed this with uh, my students and they mentioned me that uh, they are part of these communities and they have very niche uh, memes, ne memes with games, memes with, I don't know, uh, dark memes, some of them, and uh, memes that uh, relate uh, to, I don't know, professional situations. Uh, so, of course, we have to be part of that interpretive community in order to decode uh, the meaning of the meme. So, yes, and also from a multimodal perspective, I would like to, to say that, in my opinion, memes are also logonomic systems because they also have some rules. So 
We have to know the rules in order to decode them. We have to know that they use intertextuality, they use certain images that are uh, drawn maybe from popular culture, from movies, the meme with Leonardo DiCaprio and his face is everywhere. Uh, and of course, memes that use maybe some cultural references uh, from the novels, uh, from uh, public figures, Bernie Sanders memes, uh, and the brands also use that uh, those memes in order to uh, transmit a message to their audience. So memes are everywhere, even in the brand communication strategies, in political communication, uh, maybe educational related memes in order maybe to transmit a message uh, to the audience, to the students and so on. So they spread across different domains and different cultures. And uh, I think this is the main important idea here. So basically in the future, we're gonna have um, a new meme, like uh, the meme after the meme, the post meme, another cultural spreading that will be called different probably, I don't know. Probably, but the term meme, I think it will it will still be as relevant as uh, it is today. And if we look into Henry Jenkins and his book, The Convergence Culture, uh, he talks about um, a single a singularity. In future, from a technological point of view, we will have maybe just only one device which will gather all the information. So we will not be on the laptop, on the phone, and I don't know, on the tablet in the same time. We'll have only one device. And that singularity might also influence how we will spread memes and how we will maybe be talking about them. So besides having uh, the new meme, we will also have singularity. So yeah, this is a new, uh, new and different uh, setting uh, that uh, we have to take into account here. Bianca, can I ask a question, please? Yes, of course. From uh, from the point of view of uh, virality, uh, I think uh, that will be interesting to find out uh, uh, what are the um, the most viral meme, memes uh, on the web. Uh, we can can we analyze uh, this uh, this uh, thing? Mm -hmm. There are the tools to do that. Well, uh, it depends. I I mainly had here a qualitative and semiotic approach. But if you want to look at the numbers, because I'm believing that you are referring to numbers. Well, uh, you can use maybe a social network analysis and see uh, how did they spread over the internet because the social network analysis permits you to visualize, to make maybe a visual graph and see how a certain meme has managed to spread across the internet. And here I would like to say that the most successful meme in the pandemic situation was the one with uh, the Ghana workers, if you remember, uh, the Ghana workers uh, and the coffin. So a lot of people laugh when they saw that coffin and the Ghana workers and all sorts of messages there related to the pandemic situation. And that was a dark meme because it relates to death. But a lot of people laughed because of the situation, uh, the global pandemic situation, and maybe also uh, because they felt the need to react in a way. So that was the most successful uh, meme around the pandemic, especially at the beginning uh, in March and April 2020. Uh, so, yes, we can look at uh, maybe the awareness, the reactions, and uh, I think the most important thing is to see how the meme spreads. So to have a social network analysis, that would be way better, because uh, you can see that it starts from one user that publishes it maybe on iGag or uh, on Facebook, and then it spreads across all the internet. Uh, and you see the reactions, you see that people uh, tend to bring their own uh, judgment there by, by putting some captions, like Vladimir Tismanianu made it super cool, and then it's not so cool. Now I'm so, thinking how yes. to collect the data. <laughs> this is the uh, difficult part. Uh, okay, thank you. You can use uh, Facebook public pages and CrowdTangle as uh, Elena uh, managed yes. to gather the data. But just or manually if they are private pages. Think about them, um, uh, not only Facebook, but uh, WhatsApp and other uh, social... Uh, other networks. social networks. Yeah. Uh, okay, sites. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yes. Elena, do you have any insights on this? Um, I, uh, 
not really, but I just want to pick up on the last thing that Florine said, the uh, data collection. And I think we, dis we can discuss about meme in terms of discourse, what we think they uh, convey. We think that that's an offensive language, like in our case, me and Juana's case, uh, you think that is contestation. And that is, that is always with memes and many, uh, there are some uh, experimental or empirical uh, analysis of memes, but the majority of the studies I, uh, I, uh, um, uh, I uh, came across so far are, you know, these like discourse based and from uh, uh, from a linguistic and so, and that is always um, that is always running the risk of analyst bias. Mm -hmm. So we this is what we think, uh, Juana and I, Bianca, and what we need to do is to see if these me how these means are. Uh, understood how are their process what people you know consumers really think about them so florine i would say that you i would suggest that you do you uh, do both you um, uh, build a corpus and then maybe do a focus group or interviews with people from those groups uh, or from people relevant people that you screen out how many mean do you generate mean do you as, um, share and I don't know means and try to see if, how they un understand this how they uh, if memes are really really important important in the sense that they actually they act upon them if they consider them racist if they uh, would not participate to a, uh, to a, one of Vladimir Tismananu's uh, conferences because he uh, endorsed a racist meme that is where that is where you see the impact of this type of digital media discourse on the society or on people as such so i think that is i know i don't remember the author i'm sorry but i know that some uh, people in the us with young people they did a focus group to see if political information their um, engagement with political information is uh, is influenced by memes and i remember that the results were to a certain degree they actually they don't we don't apparently those people those young americans they don't um, make political decisions based on the uh, inform based on meme, based on the fact that they uh, they uh, uh, share, they approve, or they share, they like those memes. There, there are some factors that also matter. So it's it's not that easy to talk about. But yeah, of course, a, a first layer would be to actually to disentangle the uh, information that is contained from a semiotic, linguistic, social sciences perspective. Um, bio, semiotics, and so on and so forth. But then if you really want to tap into the potential of memes as, uh, uh, as um, participatory artifact, digital and political culture uh, participation uh, enforcers, then you have to ask people about them. You have to look at, you have to do some experimental uh, inquiries. Yes, so qualitative research, uh, I think it would be kind of mandatory <laughs> here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you have to look at the context as well, the social context. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, I have an example here with uh, some students, well, future students at Harvard University, who created a group on Facebook. It was private, but on that group, they shared dark memes, uh, very racist memes, memes with that kid, that child. So um, the, uh, the management of Harvard University have found out of this uh, group, even though it was private, and uh, they managed to, to gather the data, I don't know how, uh, and the students were sanctioned. They were not able to become, in a way, students of Harvard University because they were only, uh, they should have become students uh, after that summer. So they created that group in order to make fun, but it transformed into something that had consequences over their lives. So that could happen with students, but that could happen maybe with uh, uh, people that try to, to uh, hire somewhere, 
or with politicians as well when they of course uh, they are mocked uh, maybe on, on some specific dimension see what happened with Viorica Dancila so yes this, this could affect the public image as well and you have to understand why so it's not sufficient only to gather the data and use maybe a social network analysis to see how does it floats over the internet uh, it is very important to see the context and uh, maybe the reactions and uh, maybe to understand the, all the uh, information that uh, is uh, is spread it's across the internet. So that would be a suggestion. Okay, if there are any other questions, remarks, uh, I think it was a very challenging panel, over two hours. So this is, uh, I think, uh, a premiere here at the Semiosis in Communication uh, third edition. Uh, so uh, do you have any other remarks, questions, suggestions? Well, if not, I would like to thank you for the participation at this panel. Uh, and uh, I would like to ask you to give a virtual uh, round of applause to all the speakers. So I will also <laughs> give a round of applause. Uh, so congratulations and thank you for participating uh, at this very challenging, um, challenging panel. I invite you to a virtual coffee break because this is the times in which we are living in. Uh, and then to the next panels uh, of the Semiosis in Communication Conference. I, I'm thinking that the master lecture will not be because it had to start from 12, but you can see the other panels uh, that uh, will start uh, after, um, after the lunch break. So I wish you a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. And I hope to see you at uh, other conferences face to face or maybe at uh, the faculty. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Bianca, for chairing this panel. And uh, thank you all for being here. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Goodbye.